Hi, this is Sally Duros. I'm talking to Kyle Smith from the Center for Na Neighborhood, Neighborhood Technology. Technology. And we're over at the Donk House over on Western Avenue in the Lincoln Square neighborhood talking about transit-oriented development. And Kyle, what are you going to talk about tonight? Well, I'm going to make the case that transit-oriented development is a good strategy for both this neighborhood and the city of Chicago in a couple of different ways. Um, one thing that this development does um, is it caters to those who have fewer cars by providing fewer parking spots. Um, and in fact, the number of car-free renters and renters under 35 and single-person households that don't own cars in this neighborhood is on the rise. Um, but there's a real need for those units and some... Hi, Sally. <laughs> Hello. Um, and some of the data that we analyzed for market activity here since 2000, the number of studios and one-bedrooms and um, units in two flats have declined between 20 and 33 percent just since 2000. Um, is this um, development you're discussing tonight, is this, is this rentals or is this condominium units? Um, the numbers I'm talking about are rentals. Okay. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's multiple dynamics going on. Um, the, this area, a uh, 10 minute walk around the station, um, has declined in population and households since 2000. Um, so as the neighborhood has grown more popular, um, it's actually losing population. And one reason for that I suspect, is that the, um, as two flats have been deconverted into single family homes and as apartment buildings have been converted into condominiums, smaller units give way to bigger units and the net result is both a loss in rentals and a loss in overall units because we have the same real estate from smaller units to bigger units. Mm -hmm. um, so those smaller units though, those house young people, they house single person households, you know, all of whom have a role to play in a neighborhood economy mm -hmm. for shopping and all kinds of things. So the development like this, you know, creates more diversity in the housing stock that has been lost since 2000. Okay, so, so basically in this neighborhood, we're losing rentals and th this development that is the focus of the meeting tonight is going to um, help replace some of those. That's absolutely right. Um, and. The development alone, um, with just 40 units, um, can add millions of dollars in additional retail spending potential mm -hmm. around here. Are, are they affordable housing units, or how are you defining the class of uh, rental? Um, the, I would, you know, they're market rate units. Um, so what would market rate be for a two bedroom in this neighborhood? That's a great question. I actually don't have the answer to that at my fingertips. Is there TIF money involved in this development at all? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I think you'd have to ask the development team. Okay. You know, one of the questions I have about um, one of the questions I have about um, yeah, what well, about transit-oriented development is. Is, has it been used successfully in other places? And actually, what is the rate of replacement? Like, for instance, if you build rentals here and you've got people living here for a while and then they have babies and say they get cars or they move away, mm -hmm. what happens to that housing over time? I mean, mm -hmm. is, is there any kind of record on um, how that housing is maintained as rental property? That's, that's, a, that's a good question. I don't, I don't have an immediate answer to that. I mean, the one, the one thing I would say um, is that the largest de growing demographic in uh, both the Chicago metro and the United States since 1990 has been single person households. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be the demand to live in the units is always going to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and for that reason, um, there is every market incentive, you know, to maintain the housing as it's <clears throat> built at the time of the investment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, well I know, I'm, I'm, I live right over by the metro station, and I know they put affordable, so-called affordable units in there, right over by the metro, and the two bedrooms are renting for 2100 a month, hmm. and the one bedrooms are 1200 a month, which I consider to be high, but you know, I'm old-fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> I consider that to be yeah. very high. Yeah. Um, um, but you don't have a sense of the rental price or what, what that would be? 
No, I can't, I can't speak to that. I mean, you know, we're, we're large advocates of there being uh, affordable units near transit. I think it's important uh, for households of all income mm -hmm. to live near transit. For this particular development, and also the one you're talking about, I, I just can't speak to it. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for your time. It'll be interesting to see what they hear tonight. I'd like to, I look forward to hearing your presentation. Great. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.